One of the biggest lies in the financial space is around the whole idea of multiple streams of income. Because I'm sure you've heard it, everybody says that every millionaire has at least seven streams of income. But what they don't tell you is that most of these millionaires did not become millionaires or rich or wealthy because they had seven streams of income. They became millionaires because of one, and once they became rich, that's when they started getting these other streams of income. What's up everybody, I am Just Pareet Singh from the MinorityMindset.com where money minds rethink rich. When I used to think of multiple streams of income, in my mind that meant, wow, in my bank account, that means one week I might get a $1,400 check from one place and then a $400 check from somewhere else and then the next week I might get a $600 check from somewhere and then a $400 check and then next week a $1,000 check and then a $300 check. The whole idea is you're not just making income from one place anymore, you're making income from four, five, six, seven different places so you just quadrupled your income because now you got multiple streams of income coming in. But the reality is it really doesn't work like that. Let me start by talking about the seven streams of income that millionaires have. This is what every media company on the internet talks about when it comes to millionaires and how they are rich. It's because they have these seven streams of income. So one is your earned income. This is the money you make from your job. One is your stock dividend income. One is your rental income from your real estate. One is your capital gains income from selling your investments and assets at a profit. It. One is your interest income, one is your profit income from businesses, and I am missing one. One is your royalty income. That sounds great. You go to work to get a paycheck, and with your paycheck, you get six other paychecks too because you got these multiple streams of income working for you. Here's the thing if you want to create an income stream, you got to invest one of two things. You got to either invest money or you got to invest time. Like if you wanted to start this business and get this business paying you money, either you gotta invest your time to build this business and get it going, or you gotta have the money to fund the business and have somebody else run the business, that way it can make you some money. If you don't got money, then you gotta invest your time. But there's only so much time in a day. Like there's only 24 hours in a day and there's no way for you to build seven different businesses or seven different income streams at once. That means if you wanna create multiple different income streams, you gotta be investing the money. But if you don't have the money to invest in seven different income streams, then you're just gonna dilute yourself way too thin and create income from nowhere. The whole idea of multiple streams of income makes sense because now you're not relying on one income. Like if you have this accounting business and you only have one client and this client leaves you, now you have no more money coming in. But if you have five different clients or 10 different clients and one leaves you, it's not as big of a deal. Same with your job. I mean, if you, all of your money is coming in from your job and you have no other streams of income and then you get fired from your job, now you got no other money coming in. There's a few different strategies or ways to look at multiple streams of income. One way is, okay, I wanna become wealthy and so I'm gonna do a whole bunch of different things because hopefully one of these things is gonna stick and make me very successful. So I'm gonna start this e-commerce business, I'm gonna do freelancing, I'm gonna do this affiliate marketing, I'm gonna do the side hustle and I'm gonna do a bunch of these things and hopefully one of these is gonna make me a millionaire. Number two is, okay, I go to work every single day and I make a good paycheck, but then I'm gonna invest some of my paycheck into real estate and stocks and these passive investments. That way now I can create new passive streams of income. And number three is I'm gonna put all of my eggs in one basket and I'm gonna work really hard to do this one thing and create this one stream of income really big. And once I do that, then I'm gonna have more money to invest into a whole bunch of other things and create more streams of income. Let me start by talking about number one because that's where I used to think when I started my entrepreneurial journey because I used to think that becoming wealthy was kind of like a ladder. I'll show you what I mean. But before I get into that, I need you to do me a quick favor and smash that thumbs up button below because the way the YouTube algorithm works, if you do not smash that thumbs up button, then YouTube is much less likely to show you and other people our financial news and education videos. Here's how I used to look at multiple streams of income. I used to think that multiple streams of income and wealth kind of look like a ladder like this, where each one of these steps was a different type of income that you would create. So one might be your e-commerce store, one might be free Lansing, one might be doing affiliate marketing, one might be a side hustle and cutting people's grass, and one might be, I don't know, selling cakes. If you create all these different income streams, this ladder, then eventually you're gonna get to the top and this is where wealth is sitting. So if you can create multiple different streams of income like every millionaire has, then you will have the income coming in to help you climb up this ladder and reach wealth because that's where everybody wants to be. We all want to be at the top of the ladder. And so this is exactly what I was doing. I started off over here working at weddings. 
And then I had the idea with a partner of mine to start this event planning business. This is still in high school. And this event planning business and this wedding business that I was working on carried on into college. So I'm doing these two things. And then a friend approaches me with the idea to start this t-shirt business because a bunch of people are buying t-shirts in college and we can make a lot of money selling these t-shirts. So now I got this t-shirt business that I'm also kind of working on in addition to that. And then I'm starting to see people make all this money in the stock market because they're trading stocks trading penny stocks. I have no idea how this works. So now I'm learning about stock market trading and trying to make some money in the stock market. And then I go to the seminar and this guy is talking about this college painting business that we could start where essentially we could run our own kind of mini business and hire people to paint people's homes and make a lot of money doing that. So I almost, I don't actually do this, but I almost started this college painting business. But now, the way I look at it, is that I got a bunch of different things going for me. None of them are really making me that much money. My event planning business was doing pretty good, but the other things were not making me that much money. But I have all these things just in case, because if one fails, now I got a backup. I'm just throwing things at the wall and hoping something's gonna stick, because if something sticks, now I will have a huge thing that's gonna make me successful, because now, I'm climbing up this wealth ladder because I got these multiple different streams of income, even though most of them are not really making that much money, but they're taking a lot of time out of me. When I was in this stage, anytime somebody would come to me with a business idea or a money making idea, chances are I was gonna jump on it because I don't wanna miss out on the opportunity to make something or be a part of something that's gonna make it big. And so I'm just kinda spreading myself here, 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 everywhere, because I want my hands in a whole bunch of buckets because just in case one of these things make it, I wanna be a part of that thing. And so now I have my hands and myself tied everywhere, but I'm not really making that much money because I'm spreading myself way too thin. I am very broad, I have no speciality, I'm not narrow at all, I'm just kinda do a little bit of a lot. I'm trying to be a jack of all trades, but I'm not going really anywhere because my ladder is just staying stagnant. This is what most people are talking about and preaching and pitching when they're talking about multiple streams of income. It's having your hands in a whole bunch of different pots and creating a bunch of different things and trying to create these different income streams, that way you have a whole bunch of different incomes coming in, that way in case one fails, you got something else to fall back on. Now, this didn't work for me. It works for some people, but for the majority of people, for the majority of millionaires out there, this is not the way that most people become successful or wealthy. It doesn't work like this. If you've ever seen the movie Yes Man, that's kind of how I felt when I was living like this, because anytime a business opportunity or a money-making opportunity came my way, I tried to jump on it because I figured if this one works, if it pops, I'll be a part of it and then I'll be on the winning side of it. But when you try to do everything, at least for me, when I try to do everything and I stretch myself so thin, I ended up really doing nothing. I had you know one income stream that was doing pretty well, but the others were kind of just there and there were learning opportunities, which was nice, but they didn't make me any money. The second type of multiple streams of income is how the majority of people become millionaires. This is where you have a job, you make money, and then you invest some of your money into stocks or real estate or other passive investments that are working to make you more money. This is the one that I talk the most about on our YouTube channel because this is the one that's most accessible to people because if you're working a job, now it's all about living below your means, that way you have some extra cash, now you can deploy this cash somewhere else, that way this cash can earn you more money. But when you are investing this money, the important thing here is you understand the risks involved and you understand the learning curve. Because if you understand the learning curve and you put in the effort to learn what you're doing, you can get a much better return on your money because now you are not spreading yourself too thin. Again, because you're not just throwing your money in random places, you're putting your money where you know, and when you know where you're putting your money, you can get a better return on your money. Like I just turned on two very potentially lucrative investment opportunities just because I am not familiar with these investments and I'm not ready to go through that learning curve right now. One was in this transportation company. They were looking for a financing deal. It was like a $50,000 opportunity and they were promising a really good return. And the other was this hotel. They wanted a $100,000 investment and they were building this really nice hotel in a great area. I turned both of these down because I'm not familiar with either of these businesses and I don't wanna go through the learning curve right now to learn how these things work. I wanna continue investing in things that I know and when I got some more time, maybe I'll look into investing in other things. I talk about this when it comes 
comes to stock market investing a lot, where you have to pick a strategy. For a lot of people, when it comes to stock market investing or just investing in general, their strategy is throw your money into something and hope it makes you some money. But that's not a real strategy and it doesn't work when things go wrong. When you want a real strategy, you gotta know what is your investment criteria, what are you looking for, and then invest based on that because this strategy is gonna help you not just when times are good, but when things go wrong as well. You gotta know what you're looking for, you gotta know what your expertise is, master that, and if you can do that, you will be able to make way more money over the long term because now you know why you're investing and you know what you're doing. If you're working a job and you have an income coming in, you should 100% be investing some of your money. Now, when you're starting off as an investor, you're not gonna know how to invest. I get that. And so there's a learning curve that you have to go through, but you just gotta understand that there is a learning curve. And as you start to learn, that's when you wanna go from this broad to narrow understanding of your investments. Where are you investing? Are you just throwing your money into stocks or are you throwing your money into value stocks? Or what type of investments are you're looking for that's going to give you the best return because once you start to narrow your focus you're going to understand way more about how to use your money and understand the investments way better this is where you got to really understand the difference between an active investment and a passive investment an active investment is something where you put your time into something to make this money right like i talked about earlier if you want to create an income stream you got to either invest your time or your money so an active investment is something that requires a lot of your time this is something like your job, because if you wanna make money from your job, you gotta go into work and you gotta do something, that's how you get paid. A passive investment, on the other hand, is just where you throw your money into something and then you can turn around, do something else, and continue to get paid. The thing about passive investing, which is cool, is you get paid without doing a task, but you're gonna get a smaller return with your passive investing than your active investing because you're not putting your time in it, it's just your money. When you invest your time and your efforts and your labor, you can get a much better return on your money, but there's a limit to how many active investments that you can do because we only got 24 hours in a day. So you might be able to do one active investment, maybe two, like your job and a side hustle or a job and an evening business that you're working on, but that's really it. You cannot manage seven different active investments and hope to make it big with all of them. You gotta start with one, manage one, grow it, and then continue whenever you're making this money to invest it into these passive investments, things like stocks and real estate. Real estate isn't always passive in the beginning because there's a big learning curve you gotta get through and understanding how real estate investing works. But once you get past that hurdle, then real estate can be very passive. This is why as soon as you start making money, as soon as you start getting an income, you wanna start putting some of this money towards your passive investments because this is how most people become wealthy and millionaires is by taking a little bit of money every single month every single paycheck and putting it towards your investments every single time you get paid that way now you're building this little nest egg that is working to make you money and as you do that you're gonna build this wealth slowly and you're gonna learn along the way you're gonna learn the different types of investments and you're gonna learn how to grow your investments so you just got to make sure you keep funneling some of your money into these passive investments and this brings me to the third strategy of multiple streams of income which is where you build one stream of income first one massive stream and once you do that now now you diversify into your seven streams or whatever you want to have. Do you remember this ladder method that I talked about before? Now let me show you why I'm not a fan of this method anymore because let's assume that you have $50,000 and you want to start creating these multiple streams of income. So you already work on a job and you got this extra $50,000 and most of your time is going to a job. Now one of the things you're going to do is you're going to invest some of this money into the stock market. So you can put $10,000 into the stock market. Then you want to start this business because you want to create this profit income. Well, you're already spending all this time at your job and now you gotta put some money into starting this business. Maybe you put another $10,000 into starting this business, but now you're working a full-time job and starting a full-time business while you're putting some money into your stock market investments. If you really believed in your business, why are you investing in the stock market when you could be funding more money into your business? I mean, the stock market might be able to get you a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10% return a year on your money, but if you can grow your business, you can double your money in a year or two years. So now you have a little bit of money going into your business, you have a little bit of money going into your stocks, and then you wanna create this royalty income, so you start writing this book. And if you wanna write a book, it takes a lot of time, but it also takes money to publish the book and market the book and get it out there. 
you might put another $10,000 into getting this book out there because you want to create this royalty income. But now if you really believed in this book, why are you putting so much time and money into this different business? I mean, you could just be pushing this book and create this real royalty income from a book. And now you want to invest in real estate on top of that. And you got a little bit of money left. And now you're going to put this money as a down payment to invest in this rental property. But you don't know any contractors. You don't know any real estate agents. You don't know any real estate attorneys. And so you kind of just going through the deal trying to find this way to create this passive income, but you're spreading yourself too thin. You had $50,000. That's a good amount of money, but you're putting some money here, 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 but it's not taking you anywhere because you're not believing in yourself and anything. You're just spreading yourself everywhere, hoping something's gonna stick. But when you do everything, you end up doing nothing. That's why for me now, I look at this multiple streams of income, not like a ladder, but more like a wheel. This looks more like a donut than a wheel, but let's assume this is a wheel where now, what you wanna create are spokes in this wheel where everything supports the central purpose and as you kind of develop one of these spokes, it helps build the second spoke and the third spoke. But the important thing here is you want to focus on building just one spoke first. Once you can develop one spoke, once you are worth a million dollars, now we can start working on the second spoke and then the third spoke and then the fourth spoke. And the important thing here is every time you develop a spoke, this needs to help build this one. These need to all kind of fuel each other. That way now you can create a wheel that keeps spinning and working towards you. I'll show you what I mean by this. If I give Minority Mindset as an example, we started off just as a YouTube channel of me talking in front of a camera. But then slowly we started to grow and we started to make some more money. And then I started reinvesting this money back into Minority Mindset. One of the things that we did was we created a financial newsletter. Now, our financial newsletter kind of supports our YouTube channel because when you subscribe to our newsletter, then we can support our YouTube channel and our YouTube channel supports our newsletter. We both talk about financial stuff, so we both educate you in a different way. Our YouTube channel is a lot about financial education. Our newsletter is all about what's happening in the financial world, but it's creating a new stream of income for the company. Then, as the newsletter grew, now we're investing heavily into our blog and our website. We have a dozen or so writers for our blog that are writing a bunch of financial education education content to provide you with more valuable content, more financial education. And now each of these things are supporting each other. If you go onto our website and read our blog, well, then you might be interested in checking out our newsletter. And if you check out our website, you might also be interested in our YouTube channel. But all these things are supporting each other because if you check out our YouTube channel, you might also be interested in our website. And so all these things are supporting each other all in the financial space. Now we're working to develop an app. And this is one of those things that's going to come out in 2021. But all these things are supporting each other where it's all in the financial media space. We're all a part of Minority Mindset and we're all building each other. Each one of these spokes helps build the next one and each of them helps the previous one grow even bigger too. And so now it's not these kind of different things where, oh yeah, let me do some affiliate marketing here. Let me do the Shopify store here. Oh yeah, let me do this freelance hustle here. All these things are uncorrelated, unrelated ladder steps. Now it's a wheel where everything is building each other. You're trying to build the central piece. The tough thing about doing this is you stop being so broad and you get narrow. And the issue that I face, and I know a lot of people face when they try to get narrow is you feel like you're missing out on a lot of opportunity because now you think, oh, I'm not doing this and I'm not doing that and I'm missing the opportunity to make money here and I'm missing the opportunity to grow my business this way. But when you are not so broad, then you have the opportunity to really focus and make money in a specific niche and now you're focusing and you can really be the master at one thing. Now when you can really master one thing, then you can go out and start to get bigger and bigger because you've already mastered one thing and you've built one spoke. But when you're so broad and so general and you try to do so many different things, you end up going nowhere and nobody knows you for anything. You're just there. But you got to focus on one thing, build this one thing, and then once you are worth a million dollars doing one thing, now you can really start diversifying and using your money as a tool because now you have the money to do it and you can use your money to help fund these new things, these new streams of income because now you have the capital to do that and you have the one thing to help support these other things. And now as you grow, maybe you want to diversify and put your money somewhere else. Now you have the capital to do that because you have built something and now you have more money and now instead of you investing your time to build something else, you have the capital to go and invest in something completely different 
learn how to do it, and use your money as a tool to help grow it. Yeah, maybe you're not gonna get the same return as if you were the person doing it, but you only got 24 hours in a day, and your money can go way further than you can. You can scale the amount of money you have, but you cannot scale your hours. And so now, when you got this going, now it's all about taking your money and putting it to places where you wanna go. Yeah, maybe you built this thing here, now you can invest in commercial real estate here, or maybe you wanna invest in hotels, or maybe you wanna invest in startups. You can kind of figure out where you wanna go and specialize in that, but now you got the capital to help take you there. So when it comes to multiple streams of income, multiple streams of income are great but you got to understand how multiple streams of income really works if you want to create these multiple streams of income so you can become successful or wealthy or rich chances are you are spreading yourself way too thin if you're trying to do seven different things at one time what you want to do first is find one thing master that be the best at that and build that first once you can do that now it's a lot easier for you to kind of go out and be a little bit broader now because you already started narrow you have built this one thing, you have created this one stream of income, and now you can start putting this money somewhere else. Now you can start investing your money into other passive investments, maybe other active investments, because now you have the capital to help you do that, but it all starts with that one stream of income first. You gotta build this one thing, and once you are the master of that, then you can start spreading it out. If you've ever read Made in America by Sam Walton, Sam Walton was the founder of Walmart, he talks about this very concept. He says that one of the reasons Walmart became Walmart, one of the biggest retailers in the world, was because he didn't diversify. He kept growing Walmart and he kept his eggs all in that one basket because his most important thing was to build Walmart before he started creating these different streams of income. He wanted to build one thing first and then then was the only time we started thinking about doing other things. If you enjoyed this video, here's a video that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our free finance and business newsletter. And as always, keep hustling. And we'll be able to hang out and do things like normal, hopefully. I haven't eaten out at a restaurant with my friends since the beginning of 2020. What you don't want to do once things go back to normal is say, oh my God, we got to make up for 2020 and go out to eat every single day to make up for what didn't happen in 2020.